Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. I'm Courtney. And I'm Teddy, and in this video, we are going to be going down some different paths on how to build a starter fragrance collection in four different ways. So how we're going to do this, and first just some insight to how I was thinking about this. Now, a starter fragrance collection, what does that even mean? So I'm thinking about how could you build a collection in a lean way at the beginning of your fragrance journey, what are some different ways to go about that? So some factors here that we're going to consider is we don't want these to be so cost prohibitive. Uh, doesn't mean that we're not gonna be able to spend some money. We're gonna look at some niche here as well as looking at some designer, but finding these different types of personas in which you can go about building this collection uh, that I think at the end of the day, I think is reflective of what many people are probably doing. And they're not always gonna follow the same route Fragrances are all about your own individual expression. So we have four different personas here. I'll have two and Courtney will have two, but let's introduce those personas to begin. So the first persona here is signature scent. So this is someone who wants to maximize their budget and have one fragrance that can work in every scenario. The second category is champion for the cheapies. So this is the enthusiast that values a good deal whenever possible and prefers maximum versatility with their given budget. Then number three, we have one for every season. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Someone who collects for all the different seasons of the year, so they have every box checked. Then we have finally the hot and cold category. This is someone who values the perfect dichotomy of having one fragrance for both weather extremes. So for our first category here, we have the signature scent. Now this is where you're trying to go to maximize that budget, get as much as you can for the dollar amount. Now I'm trying to think about under $250 here, give or take. Uh, so I wanted to go for some niche, but then I'll also mention some designer options. I'm gonna give multiple options here, uh, but a few that come to mind, one is going to be Mancera with Cidre Boise. The thought process here is something that could work year round. You want something very versatile, and I think this is a really good example of that. Uh, we can mention the intense version or the regular version. One's gonna lean more into the woods, coming to the forefront earlier. The other, the original, is going to have more of that fruity opening, and then also have some sweetness as it dries down uh, compared to more leather becoming to the forefront with the new intense version. Some other options that I'd recommend if you're gonna lean a little bit more into the cold weather environment throughout the year. Something like Parfum de Marley Layton, absolutely fantastic. Going to have that rich apple note, vanilla, uh, cardamom. It's a great stepping stone, and I think this is an easy fragrance to, uh, even for somebody that's not even into fragrances, if they just smell this, I think they're gonna find this pleasant, versatile, and that's what you want if you're trying to maximize your budget. And then the other option here we have is Nishane with Hasivat. Similar type of lane here to that of Mancera with Cidre Boise. This is going to also have that bright fruity opening. So this is more in alignment with the original Mancera. And then as it dries down, more traditional masculine notes, strong note of oak moss, uh, and then some woods as it starts to get to that base. So I think these are what you want. You want utmost uh, amount of flexibility and you also wanna be able to maximize your budget. Uh, there's other options you could of course go for, any of the Aqua de Joe, Profumo, Profundo, those can absolutely work. And then Tom Ford, something like Oud Wood, is just a couple honorable mentions here, but uh, that's how I would look at this signature scent. Many other ways to go with it, but those are just some options. All right, Courtney, for our next category, we have Champion of the Cheapies. So we're getting a list of a bunch of more affordable fragrances that can really check off those boxes. So let's see what you have. Yeah, so number one here is Mont Blanc Star Walker. This one is so versatile. I think any of the Mont Blancs you really can't go wrong with. So if you're like, hey, I don't really love Star Walker, any of them I feel mm -hmm. like would be a really good option. Mont Blanc just really checks all the boxes, covers all the categories, would be a great gym scent. Um, citrus, very fresh, very versatile. Can't go wrong. Next, um, so this one could be a very versatile scent, but also I think it would be great for the gym, good for the summertime, and incredibly mass appealing. I think every woman we bring onto this channel loves this one. So mass appealing, can't go wrong. Or at least doesn't have a problem with it. Yes, not offensive at all. So these first two were your warm weather, very versatile. Going into a different category here with Karl Lagerfeld Classic. This is your tobacco amber, very masculine, powdery, sweeter type of scent. The reason I chose this one is because it's a very affordable, great price for a scent like this. So if you've never tried these type of fragrances before, you aren't sure if you really like that tobacco, amber, vanilla kind of sweeter smells, I think this one would be a really great one to start with. And this is also, I think, a thought process around this type of collector, which I honestly have done this with anything that I've ever gotten into. Now, you don't want to overstretch where you get so much involved with just finding the deal, getting the cheapie, because that will add up, and then you potentially are spending more on this than you are on like a really nice bottle of fragrance. And mm -hmm. I think that kind of goes and show. These are solid fragrances, but it's just a very different game. So the good thing though here is you can test things out, you can see what you like without spending as much money on each individual bottle, because nobody likes to buy something and then like 
figure out they don't really like it. This mm -hmm. does it where it's not doing the same amount of damage. It's not gonna hurt you as much if you don't like it. Mm -hmm. The next one here is one that I really enjoy, and that is Periellus 360 White. Mm -hmm. It kind of goes into that lavender, mint, vanilla category, which I love so much. It's kind of like the Prada Luna Rosa Sport, the Le Mal type of scents, but again, at a very great price. The other cool thing that it does is it has some citrus also off the top, so it's a little bit more like juicy and fruity off the yeah. top, which is an interesting combination with that type of a genre that you're describing. Mm -hmm. And it does add a layer of versatility to it mm -hmm. that you wouldn't get if it was just that kind of sweetness or masculine type of vibe. Next one here is Aspen by Cody, and this one is very different than all the rest, but I think that's why it fits so nicely in this kind of guy that's looking for the most versatility um, and a lot of different scents. This one is your gentleman mature, grown up, but also fresh. And it's like a pep in the step, a splash in the face in the morning. It does have similar characteristics to mm -hmm. like a Davidoff cool water, um, but I don't think it's as harsh necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're looking for a scent like that, you never tried it before, I think this is a really good one. And to round out your little collection here, I have Halloween Man X. This is your dark and cozy, sweet coffee with a bit of a spicy undertone. You've got the coffee, tonka bean, whiskey, cinnamon, cardamom, I love this one. I think it would be perfect for a date night situation, something that's a little bit more intimate. Again, this is just your cold weather, dark and cozy, really rounds out this collection nicely. It's actually a pretty complete collection, actually. Yeah. It's good. There you go. So for our next persona, we have one for every season. So this one's pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna go season by season. To begin here with spring, I have Bulgari Man Wood Neroli. So this is going to very much evoke the springtime with what it's going for. This is, when I think of a lot of Bulgari fragrances are kind of ultra masculine. This one is not so much the case of that. Uh, you are getting some sweetness off the top with like this Neroli. It's uh, very bright with its opening. Uh, you have bergamot, orange, and then also this starts to lean into like this woody backbone, but it's not done to the same degree that you might expect from some of their other fragrances that when they do lean into that, they usually do it with a little bit more um, authority rather than this. This is kind of just leaning into that slightly. What I would almost describe this as is a lot of similarities uh, similarities to Dunhill Icon, mm -hmm. uh, except maybe a bit more masculine in the process. Uh, this is Alberto Marias here. Uh, you're getting that synthetic kind of Neroli uh, creation uh, in the opening, but done to a really fine degree where I don't think anybody's gonna find this off-putting whatsoever. A little sweetness off the top, uh, but as it dries down, you get more of those you know, resinous, dry type of woods here. So next up here for summer, we have Dior Homme Sport. So as you might expect from the genre name of sport, it's pretty much what you're going for here. Very versatile, light wearing for the summertime, hot weather. Uh, this is right in alignment with that. Now this is the 2017 version bottle. So there's a newer version of this bottle. I think this one smells great. Uh, you have pink pepper in here, which I think is one of the more defining characteristics with uh, the mix of the blood orange note, grapefruit, lemon, so a lot of citrus, and in combination with that pink pepper, has this fizzy, effervescent feel to it. Absolutely love that. Then as it dries down, some sandalwood, vetiver, uh, pretty traditional type of opening uh, outside of that pepper note, which I think does give it that fizzy type of effect, which I think works great for the summertime. I think this is probably gonna lean slightly youth, uh, youthful, but really versatile, going to be a mass appealer. And I think that's kind of what you want for that summertime. You want that nice pick-me-up. Now next here, this is my personal favorite from the Eros line, and this is Eros Flame. This to me has very much the same DNA as you would find from some of the other Eros uh, types of fragrances, but what really makes this one different is going to be the opening of citrus. You don't have that crazy overwhelming mint uh, type of note here as well, and then also like the lavender and vanilla. Vanilla is more subdued, gives more lift to the citrus. And as I mentioned previously, my like for uh, just pepper notes and fragrances, this one also has that. Uh, I just think this comes together. It's not as overbearing, will not be as cloying as maybe some people might find with the traditional Eros. Uh, I, I just like this one. This I think is my favorite from that line. It's Me too. Much right. more subdued. I love that one. But it still does the job that you're looking for for the fall weather. Not as good from the performing uh, side, but still really good. And I'm classifying that based on like Eros terms, right? Yeah. And then for our last one here, I wanna really lean into that warm, kind of cozy type of environment for the winter time. And this is with Armani Code Profumo. So this is going to take tonka bean, amber, leather, cardamom, nutmeg, lavender. 
It's going to be a combination of some sweetness, but also with that apple note kind of has a nice kind of fruitiness as well. The lavender with some of these spices, I think creates this nice warm type of masculine feel. Warm and spicy is a great way to describe this one, but it doesn't always describe the full idea of what it's about with that green apple note. Again, leather is also there, which I think does have some interesting kind of uh, sweetness when paired with the apple. So this is one of those fragrances that's a no brainer for the cold weather months when it comes to like a date night type of quality. Oh yeah. So next category here is the hot and cold category. So polar extremes for the weather, very hot, very cold. You're not leaning into, you know, every single season necessarily. So then you can maximize your budget a little bit more and maybe spend a little bit more money, which is always good. So for the hot weather category, I have Aqua de Parma. This is from their Blue Mediterraneo line, Bergamotto di Calabria. This one is as tart as can be. It's a vetiver musk base. Um, you get the bergamot, citron, ginger, cedar, vetiver, it's delicious. I absolutely love this one. I like to wear this, but it also smells amazing on you. The thing about this one is it doesn't get as much love as like Arencia di Capri, Figo di Amalfi, yeah. but to be honest, this is kind of rising in the ranks for me. I think it's not great in performance again, yeah. but it's almost more about that citrus opening and it does have a little bit more staying power than some of the other ones I've tried. Yeah. Not much more, but enough where I really enjoy it. And I'm just, love bergamot uh, oriented types of uh, summer fragrances. Yeah, Aqua de Palma is solid, and this one I would say is pretty underrated, so you mm -hmm. might stand out. Yeah, more middle of the pack. Okay, and then for cold weather, one of my all-time favorites, I think this will be one of my all-time favorites forever, and that is Jazz Club. This one is a perfect scent for the fall and the winter. I think it would transition seamlessly into either season. It's a subtly sweet, boozy tobacco, ideally, for a date night. This is exactly what I picture in my head when I think of a date night scent. It does smell more niche and elevated, I would say, than a yes. lot of designers that kind of do something similar with the notes here. Some people do find this to be a bit too much with the combination of boozy and tobacco, but from my personal experience, I'm not much of a boozy tobacco kind of girl, and I enjoy this. Yes, I, how I've always described it is kind of nonchalance, right? It's not trying too hard. I think it is it is a little bit loud off the opening because it does have some sweetness to it, but once it dries down, oh, it's amazing. Yeah. And Scent Trail is fantastic with this fragrance. Uh, performance, I would say, is more middle of the pack, so you'll probably have better time with it in the fall, uh, but still, even with that being the case, amazing cold weather fragrance. Yep, you're the cool, mysterious guy sitting at the bar, cool jacket on. You just look amazing, so great choice. All right, guys, well, that's all we have for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. And what of these four paths is the one that you would probably follow, and what collection did you like the most? And if you were going to miss play a game, if you're going to do one of these, how would you build your collection? Say you had like a budget of around like $250, $300 for each one of these categories. How would you build your own collection and what path would you take uh, based on these different personas? We'd love to see that down below. Also, if you want to stay up to date with the content, definitely check out the Instagram, see some great photos as well in the process and you can communicate with us a little bit more directly there. And then also check out teddybaldesser.com, our new fragrance selection on the site. We have some world-class brands there and every purchase also helps out the content as so we can keep bringing you more stuff like this every single week. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and we'll see you all next time.